So one of the things I realized is that sometimes we spend time on things that don't matter as much. And sometimes we need to spend a little bit more time and attention on a few things that will actually unlock the fingerboard tremendously. What I'd like to share with you guys today is a way to listen to this C major 7 chord and play something that describes the chord very accurately. But the same thing for each color. So what we're gonna do is go over the four main colors and their exact arpeggios. But, and this is a big one, because we're gonna do it with all the inversions as well. What I mean by that is that we're not gonna just play D minor seven arpeggio and just start it here and that's it, we're good. No, no, no. We're gonna play the D minor arpeggios with all the inversions in two notes per string voicing. So that means that if you wanted to, you could potentially play all these legato ideas, very, very guitar. What this process will give you is a lot of freedom to improvise and see the fingerboard in a very clear way, but also a very good facility because these shapes of two notes per string are very easy to play fast. So if I want to articulate the chord C major 7, but actually I'm going to play the arpeggio of E minor 7 with two notes per string, I can get all these sounds that sound really cool and give us these beautiful effects. What we're going to do is a little bit of work. So I know with YouTube a lot of times people just want to spend five minutes and have the revelation of their life, which is really cool. I'm into that but we also need to spend the time on the framework and figuring out the sounds and where things are on the guitar. All right, so the plan is this. I'm gonna show you each one of the colors. So we we'll listen to major seven, we we'll listen to dominant seven, minor seven, and half diminish, which is minor seven flat five. There is a PDF on my Patreon with all this information, tabs and notation, if that helps. One, G major seven. We're gonna play this sound, and we're gonna play it from the seven, from the one, from the three, and the five, and we're only playing two notes per string. So these fingerings are a little different than what you guys know. So it's not the usual, but it will be this one. This will be the first fingering. Doubles. 
Now from the third, this is the shape that we're going to use. All these shapes and fingerings, notation, you can find on my Patreon as well if this is helpful. Alright, let's do it in time. Same thing from the five, same G major shape, and this is the shape, this is how it's gonna look. Now the cool thing is with all these shapes is we can really accelerate the tempo later on because it's and get all these cool sounds that are just like awesome. Alright, let's do it. Two, three, four. Sometimes I would imagine the shape a little bit, especially if it's a new shape. Some of these I practiced more than others, so I need to think more. And then I think whenever that happens, I want it to come to a place eventually that there's no thinking involved. There's, my fingers just know exactly what I want to do, or I can imagine the sound, it just happens. So now you have completed the G major 7 arpeggios. Yes, power to you. Now, it's cool and all, but what we need to do is bring it to a place that is really, really comfortable. And the way to do it is by singing it, practicing it, playing it, 8 notes, triplets, 16, 50 BPM, 60 BPM, etc. And then playing it on songs. Now, for now, what I would really suggest is us going forward. And what we're going to do is do G7. And look, I know it's hard and it takes time, but believe me, this process is really worth your time. All right, you ready? Let's do G7. So the sound of G7 is this. Now the thing is, we meet G7 pretty often. So we wanna know how we can see it 
the best way possible and then play it in different areas of the guitar, which we're gonna do. So we'll start the same way. In this case, it's not F sharp, but F natural. So we have F, G, B, D. And we're just copy pasting that shape and playing those ideas of two notes per string. And again, the idea we did, the idea with those two notes per string is we can actually utilize those legato sounds. So later on, we can accelerate the tempo. All right, let's do it. Try to just see the notes and be aware of what you're playing. Doubles. So if this is too hard, pause the video, check it out, go slowly and understand what you're doing. Okay, one, four, one, four, this is a minor third, major third, okay, and just copy pasting this shape. Okay, great. Maybe I want to use one, three, one, four, just in terms of fingering. options and many things to think about so just take your time slow it down and make sure you are processing the information if you're still here I'm very happy happy for you because I think this is really important to tag and to see all these shapes so now we're gonna do G minor 7 yes that's it. so we're gonna start here from 7 7 1 1 3 and this is the first shape you're gonna do so basically kind of like yeah, two notes per string and of course we'll accelerate it later for now let's sing it e four.
Same thing from the one. So we'll start from G. We'll do one, three, five, seven, one, three, five, seven, one, three, five, seven. We can skip to the one here. So the shape is this. Check it out in time. Now from the three, so the same thing we had before, one, sorry, three, five, seven, one, three, five, seven, one, three, five, seven. And you see the idea is that when we have a chord, G minor, we want to see it all through the guitar in any area that we need to, to find it, we can just grab it. And this process of seeing the inversions of the arpeggios, basically starting from different notes and mapping it with two notes per string is super, super helpful. All right, let's go. One, two, meditation a little bit when you get into it all these breathing vibes great now from D this is kind of an easy shape if you see this Awesome, great. So we did major seven, we did dominant seven, seven, G seven, and we did minor seven. So now 
we have one more color to do and this is the half diminished this one maybe is a little harder just because it's less common i guess and people practice it less so in this case we start from the f natural seven one flat three flat five and then copy paste this shape and you know all these shapes we can always kind of hear the second layer of tensions with this what i mean by that so if you have a g7 or if you have a g half diminished basically we can kind of play it e7 chord and get the nine so this shape these seven chords the next step for this is to understand and to know what substitution works on what and then you can get a lot of really really cool colors but for now let's nail the framework all right G half diminished. It is a beautiful sound. Here I didn't want to jump all the way because just if I'm doing this variation, it's a very big skip, so I wanted to spare you guys this pain. One, two, three. Let's go. You get the G. And that was. So, flat 3, flat 5, flat 7, 1, etc. Just kind of copy pasting that. And in this case here, we're basically always starting from the 3 or the 7. So, we kind of need to have this like B flat and F in mind. So, that, that will kind of help us, I think, like seeing it and seeing where we're trying to go. This one is a little more confusing in a way, maybe just because people don't play it as much, so it's just like not kind of like automatic. But the thing is, we want to see all these fingerings for that 
sound of half diminished because when we want it we want to just have it right there on the tip of our fingers quite literally one two three four and you can think about like g d flat g d flat if you want maybe that is helpful but the point is trying to see it hear it and feel the colors one is actually really confusing so don't worry if this one is harder than the other one it just means that it's unfamiliar so it's great you found something that you don't know great now we can practice it and learn it so we map and know more information so I think this is something that always happens like sometimes we get frustrated when we see we don't know something but actually it's great it gives us a really clear roadmap for success or understanding the issue right because if you can do something and you don't know you're like oh, i just can't drive it's like okay that's how what are the actions i don't even know but if you know that you don't see this like d flat you know inversion of the diminished scale or half diminished you're like okay let me check out the sound let me understand and try to really map it out Thank you so much for listening guys. I hope this was exciting and interesting. I know this one was a little of a stretch because there's a lot of information and quite some stuff to practice here, but I just wanted to share it in case you are into getting better. So let's do it. I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.